Well, hi there, Internet. My name's Court, and welcome to my new series where I will be reviewing every episode of Season 7 of Game of Thrones. Uh, these videos will all go up on Mondays. This one's a little bit late, but it's still Monday, so I think we're good. Just so you know, these, uh, these episodes that I'm doing are going to be filled with spoilers, so tap out if you haven't seen the episode yet. And this one is the season premiere, Dragonstone. Let's do it. Dragonstone opens with Walder Frey holding a feast for his army, and he's celebrating them and the fact that they were able to murder all the Starks at the Red Wedding, and he serves them some of his best wine, and then they all start dying, because the wine was poisoned. And we find out it's not, in fact, Walder Frey, Arya Stark. After everyone's dead except for the Handmaidens, whom she spared out of mercy, she tells them, when people ask you what happened here, tell them that the North remembers, and winter has come for House Frey. Some chilling stuff. Then Bran has a vision, and we see a, a black cloud coming towards the camera, which is filled with a huge army of the dead, including zombie giants. Very cool. Mira and Bran are then led through the wall by Dolorous Ed into Castle Black. Now, I'm just kind of speculating here. I kind of think maybe that was a bad idea, because after the Night King touched Bran's arm last season, they were able to get through, like, areas that magically normally would keep them out, so maybe this means now that Bran's gone behind the wall, they'll be able to get through the wall. I don't know, tell me in the comments, what do you think? At Winterfell, Jon is trying to put together like a, a, a search party to get together as much dragon glass as they possibly can. And then the question comes up, what should they do with the castles of the Umbers and Karstarks, who of course fought for Ramsay last season? Some people are saying they should tear down the castles. Sansa says, the castles didn't do anything wrong to anybody, and she thinks that they should give the castles to new families who fought for the Starks. Jon is saying, I'm not going to take the houses away from these families who have lived there for thousands of years just because, like, their fathers did something that wasn't cool. And it's kind of like a like a ping-pong match where I'm, I, I really enjoyed this scene because it was like, Jon's making a lot of sense. He's right. No, 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 I think, I think Sansa's right. No, Jon's right. Damn it, they're both making good points. Jon also then tasks Tormund and the Free Folk to go basically guard the wall in an area, I think it's called East Watch by the Sea, which is very close to where they last saw the Night King at Hardhome. So yeah, you're, you're, <clears throat> you're gonna die, Tormund. Shame. At King's Landing, Cersei and Jaime are having a discussion, and uh, Cersei's like, are you angry with me? And Jaime's like, no. And she's like, are you scared of me? And Jaime's like, should I be? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she basically tells them that they're surrounded by enemies, but she's going to fight everybody to make sure that their dynasty remains. And he's like, what dynasty? Our kids are dead. She's like, a dynasty for us then. She's like Walter White. She's in the Empire business. Then Euron Greyjoy shows up and proposes to Cersei, saying, I got a thousand ships. And as much as she wants his fleet, she refuses his proposal simply because he's not trustworthy. And he goes, well, I know that the uh, easiest way to a woman's heart is through a gift. So I'm not going to come back to the Red Keep until I have the perfect gift for you. Now, my guess is that gift is Tyrion. You gotta keep in mind, she hates, I mean, she's always hated Tyrion, but Tyrion killed her father, Tywin. She also believes Tyrion killed Joffrey, which he didn't, but whatever, that's what she believes. So what do you guys think? Again, tell me in the comments, do you think, uh, do you think uh, Euron's talking about Tyrion? I guess we'll see. Then we cut to Old Town. Oh, poor, poor Sam. They got him doing Charlie work. He's stacking heavy books, he's feeding people slop that looks like diarrhea, and he's emptying out bedpans that are filled with diarrhea that looks like the slop that looks like diarrhea. It's a truly revolting scene. Many times Sam is kind of doing that, and then I was doing that, and my buddy was doing that. And we find out Sam, because he's not yet a maester, he's not allowed, he doesn't have access to this part of the library where all the, like, the serious books are, which is the stuff he wants to know, stuff about the long night, etc., etc. So being the sneaky punk that he is, he steals the keys and sneaks in one night and smuggles out a bunch of books. Then he finds out that under Dragonstone there's this giant mine of dragonglass. And he writes a note to John. Also later in the episode we see him feeding people in cells and an arm comes out of the cell and it's got grayscale. The guy says, "Is she? has she come yet? And Sam's like, who are you talking about? And the guy's like, the Dragon Queen. And Sam's like, uh, not that I've heard, but I'll ask around. And then we sort of see Jorah Mormont's face in profile and in silhouette. Nice to see that chap again. My favorite scene in the entire episode, uh, despite the inclusion of Ed Sheeran, I just, I cannot stand that guy. My understanding is Maisie Williams is like a huge fan of his, so they wrote him like a side role so she could hang out with him for a couple days. But Arya comes across a group of Lannister soldiers in the forest and they're sitting around a campfire and they offer, they invite her to stay for dinner and give her some rabbit and some wine. And they're singing songs and all this kind of stuff. And it was such a nice little moment 
of just normal people being decent to each other, which is not something we see very often on Game of Thrones. At the end of the scene, they ask her, oh, what are you going to King's Landing for? And she's like, oh, I'm going to kill the queen. And it's like this really tense moment. And then everybody bursts out laughing and it was all in good fun. Then we see the hound is still rolling with the brotherhood and a bunch of things happen. It wasn't like super interesting, but there's one moment where Thoris of Mir says to the hound, come look into the flames. Of course, the hound does not want to do this. He is not a fan of fire. But Thoros says, listen, like I've raised people from the dead. I have powers. Look into the flames, you freak. So the hound looks into the flames and he sees like this vision. And thankfully they didn't try and show the vision in some kind of weird CGI way. I think that would have been kind of weak. We just see Rory McCann's face as he's like describing what he sees. This, again, army of like thousands of White Walkers. And Rory McCann's such a good actor. Like the way he delivers the lines really, really good. Finally, in something that we've been waiting to see for a very long time on this show, Daenerys, along with Tyrion, Varys, Grey Worm, and Missandei, arrive at Dragonstone, her ancestral home. She comes in, she kneels down on the beach and feels the sand, and then they go inside the castle, which looks super awesome. I know we haven't seen it in a long time. Man, it looks cool. She goes inside, the first thing she does is she sees one of Stannis Baratheon's banners, and she pulls that down. And it's cool, because this scene is like three, four minutes long, and there's no dialogue until... She and Tyrion walk into the war room, and she just goes, Shall we get started? Cut to credits. This wasn't like a super crazy episode, you know, it was more set up, reminding us who's who and who's where and why and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, this season's only seven episodes, so I think it's gonna launch into the stratosphere of awesome, like, really fast. So what did you guys think? What did you think of this episode? How do you think it functions as taking us from last season into this new season? Do you think Euron is talking about Tyrion? What about Bran and the Wall and the Magic and the Night King? Whatever your thoughts, hit the comments below. Let's discuss. If you enjoyed this review, please smash that like button and give it a share if you really enjoyed it. If you want to subscribe for more Game of Thrones videos or movie reviews, trailer reactions, all that kind of wacky stuff that I do, you can subscribe by hitting the Core Shake logo at the bottom right of your screen. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next whatever it is that I do, but Game of Thrones will be up next Monday as well. Take care.